morning to a very windy day. So, we're going to hollow this piece out now. Uh, but before we do that, we're just going to do a little bit of work on the rim and the opening. Uh, so I've got my spindle gouge and I am just creating a slight detail, a little inward curve, so that your eye, when you look at this piece, is taken into the, uh, the centre. Um, what I like to do is have some kind of relationship between the edge of the rim of a piece and the, um, the rest of the body of it. So because we've got such a nice curve to the outside of this piece, I want the rim to do the same kind of thing, so that when you're holding it in your hands, your fingers can feel the smoothness of the curve right the way over to the, to the opening. So we just put a little bit of radius on that, and then here we go. This is this is this is this is the point at which it happens. So just pick up the cut and then just roll the tool over, and it's a, it's a bead on the rim. So we just come round. Handle of the tool will come right the way around, just to cut in and then into the centre. I'm trying to create a little bit of a depression in the in the middle there, and that's so that the drill bit, when we actually drill the the, the centre hole, has somewhere to seat, and so it goes into the uh, into the wood quite quite straight. When you drill into wood like this it has a tendency to make the drill bit wobble off to one side which can make hollowing quite difficult. We just gave that a little bit of a sand and you can see that softer edge to the rim just means the whole thing now has a beautiful tactile quality to it. So we've got a, a drill bit set up and first things first we need to measure the depth of the pot. Very important this one. Um, and I'm using a sharpie just to mark the drill bit to the point at which I want to go. I've actually marked the depth of the piece and I come in about five millimeters so that I don't drill through the bottom. Funnels are all great fun but uh, not really much good when you want to make a vase. So, so put the, just the, uh, the lathe on and we'll just quickly speed this bit up. So the drilling of a hole its really exciting isn't it? So here we go and we just push the drill bit in, yep, there we are, whizzy whizzy, fantastic. Oh yes, just excitement on a Tuesday, isn't it really? So, hole drilled, we can move on to the actual hollowing process. And to do that, like I say, I'm going to use very, very simple tools. I'm going to use, to start off with a spindle gouge, again, but instead of using it or with the tip doing the cutting like we showed before, we're going to actually use the bottom of the wing, there you are, I'm pointing at it, that bottom wing there, which is... Part of the, the benefit of having a fingernail grind, which is the, I suppose a technical term, is having the sides of the tool sharpen slightly. So when we pop the tool into the, uh, into the hole that we've drilled, we can actually use that bottom wing to scrape away the wood on the inside. And we can do an amazing amount of hollowing with just that one tool. Um, anyone who's a wood turner will know that there's a myriad of thousands of different kinds of hollowing tools. But actually a spindle gouge will do quite a lot for you without you having to sort of jump to anything that's uh, you know, expensive or whatever. So, once we've got that uh, drilled out a little bit, you'll realise that the inside gets filled with shavings. And so I have a very expensive coat hanger that I use to uh, scoop those bits out, but we're going to jump. And now we are looking at a slightly more um, specific hollowing tool. This is uh, a tool that is designed to get around the corner and uh, cut those shoulders on the inside. So, we can just pop it through the hole and then just, as you can see, just ease the tool around and that's just cutting away the wood. Again, I'm not going to show you the whole of this because once the tool disappears inside you can't see what's happening. But needless to say, the hollowing is now completed. More later. 